Less than a decade ago, all this was just dusty desert. The Bastion Leatherneck complex has grown into a small city, equivalent to combining Aldershot and Gatwick Airport. It used to be home to 30,000 people. In less than nine months, much of it should be gone. They call this remediation, turning the site back to desert. Until recently, the focus was on closing frontline bases across Helmand. Now that's all but finished, work's underway in earnest here. The biggest military base Britain's built overseas since World War II. There was over 100 patrol bases around Helmand, and they all came in, and it took quite a long time. And the bigger main operating bases around Helmand, they came in at the beginning of this year. Uh, so it was, they were more spread out, but this one here is a lot more concentrated in one area, which gives a, an added advantage. There's about uh, nine camps that have got to come down in total over the next sort of four months. There must be at least uh, sort of 40 or 50 tents per camp. It's not just the hundreds of accommodation tents, there are thousands of ISO containers to ship out and hangars that have housed aircraft to take down. Yet a few months ago, people working on this drawdown were still building in Camp Bastion. When we first got here, the drive was on putting in new force protection and building gun positions out on the outside of Bastion. Um, some of the projects were literally, we were finishing the force protection a week later, we were closing the camps down and moving them out again. So it's been a switch from one, type, one drive to totally the opposite. The drawdown will gradually shrink Camp Bastion inwards to the heart where it all started in 2006. For some, that means moving mid-tour. The Joint Effects Group have just closed their camp, which has been home to the artillery here for years. It's really important for the, the artillery. It's been a place where we can always get a, a bed space and a brew. It's always been that welcoming, you know, regimental feel to it. Uh, and uh, this is just... Uh, another passage in our, our movement into um, Bastion 1. So this, this is not the end of our, our tenure. We're still going to be here while combat operations are, are ongoing. As Bastion closes, it has to stay operating to the very end. The man overseeing it all has been through this before in Iraq. Uh, Iraq's really different. Uh, we had a, a, a friendly country on a border. It's very easy to take stuff in really a short hop across the border. Here is a landlocked country, and it's difficult moving on the roads here. It's really, it's an order of magnitude more difficult here than my job in Iraq. Not everything has to go. The Afghan camp Shorabak will stay along with the airfield, so many of the hard buildings in between will be left for them. We understand those, those permanent fixtures to actually to belong and pass to the, to the freeholders, the Afghans, when we leave here. And so we don't intend to take uh, them down you know, unless we're, we're, there's a, a good cause to do so. But you've got something like the gym just here. Yeah. That's tense. How, That's how tense. long would it take to, to um, take that down? Uh, only a matter of days, really. It doesn't take very long at all. The difficult bit is moving all those concrete barriers. And then you've got hundreds and hundreds of accommodation tents like the ones over there. It must be a real juggle trying to keep this place operating. Yeah, it's a bit like a Rubik's Cube. You've got to keep moving things around and work out what you're going to demolish and what you're going to move on to somewhere else. Yeah, it's tricky. In the final days here, there'll be few comforts left. Showers and running water, but food will be from ration packs. Force protection will be needed to the very last. It is an immense task with an immovable deadline. James Hurst, Forces News, Camp Bastion.